And number three on my favorite things is the overall safety. Now I spoke about the accidents avoidance. You can see you have the radar here. You've parking sensors, rear cameras. You've got the SOS emergency calling system if you do have an accident. And welcome back to another done deal car review. Today we're exploring into the SUV side of the market. So this is the all new Seat Turaco. Now it sits in the same section of the market as all of its Volkswagen group brothers. We've got the Volkswagen Tiguan Allspace and of course the Skoda Kodiak. Now not only does it kind of look similar to a lot of them, but it's also very, very much the exact same in terms of chassis, engine options, space, features, but we want to delve more into it. Pricing wise, it's very similar again. It starts around 34,700 euros and ranging up to about 50,000 or more if you're gonna get something like this, which is the excellence model. Now we'll talk more about financing in the rest of the video, but for now we're gonna take a look in, see the features, see how it drives, and just learn everything we have to know about the Turaco. When you walk up to the back of the car, the first thing that you'll notice is this Audi-esque strip along there. Now it definitely makes it look a little bit sleeker and it just shows they're making use of being in the Volkswagen group. Then you've got this electric opening tailgate, which opens up a 700 litre boot, which is more than enough for two or three or probably even four or five suitcases. Now, the one thing that is worth mentioning is the Kodiak has an extra 20 litres. But when this has 7 litres and the Kodiak has 720 litres, there's not really much of a difference. You've got two little kind of storage spots down here, more or less no load lip. The only thing is it's quite a raised boot floor in general. Then you've got little hooks here for your jackets. And I guess the big thing is you've got a spare wheel. Now, this is a seven seater version. So what we're gonna do is take a look in the back and we'll show you how much, how much space is there if you've got those extra two passengers. The Turaco's party piece, which is space, agility, and just overall kind of seating options. So first of all, you can fold the seat down this way, or you can use this lever and push it forward. Now, when it comes to sitting in the back as a rear passenger, it's okay, it's a little bit tight, I'm not gonna lie, but generally speaking, you're probably only gonna have kids here. You do have cup holders, a little bit of storage here. It's not a bad, like, seventh or sixth and seventh seat. Now, let's try and move back in to the front. So we put the seats back. Now, a cool feature, you've got cup holders there, is that the seats actually move forwards and backwards, which means you can have a little bit of extra room in here. What's more is you can actually recline a little bit. In terms of headroom, we have the optional extra of the sunroof and still I have headroom. A little bit tight there, I'm not gonna lie. Now, if you wanna put up this seat, you'll see, so we can have kind of a split difference. So the seats actually fold in a 40, 40, 20. So 20%, you can have just the center seat come down. It also has armrests, or like I just said, you can fold it on its own. So options are good. You also have a 12 volt socket. In this particular excellence model, we have the heated seats and the cooled seats, which is an unusual thing in the rear. Now, another thing I'm a big fan of is this little tray. It's like being on an airplane, but what's more is if your kids are here, they can have their phone there, they can be watching a movie, and it's, it'll keep them quiet once you're on those long drives down to the west of Ireland. As you step into the driver's seat, your first impressions are good. The seats are nice and comfortable. And unlike the Seat Arona, which we tested last, there actually is lumbar support, which I was, I was missing that in the previous one. So I'm glad to see that they've put it into this car. Now, the steering wheel is nice and sleek. The general build quality, everything feels nice and solid. It it's actually is quite a nice place to be. Now the infotainment system and the car in general offers a lot of nice little toys. So obviously, I say obviously, there is the sunroof here. So if I switch on the ignition, you'll see that the sunroof will close. You can actually put a blind across there too, so that you're completely in an enclosed car. 
Now, you have features, and I don't want to go over the features too much as we cover them in the Arona, as a lot of it's quite similar, but you've got your stop start, you've got your parking assist, your parking sensors, you've of course, if you put it into reverse, you've got your reversing camera here. The party piece though is this digital dash. Now I am a massive fan of digital dashes in general. You can have your sat nav, you can have kind of different sort of screens pop up in front of you, which is, it's a nice, it gives it a classy feel to it. Another thing that we loved about the Arona and I also love about this is the wireless charging. It's a great addition to every single car and I'm looking forward to the future having it. Storage wise, so you've got space for your drinks here, you've got space for your drinks here. So two drinks there, loads of storage in here. In fact, you can kind of adjust this, this armrest depending on how tall you are. More storage down here. You've even got a little bit of storage in there for maybe your wallet or some credit cards. Big glove box, nice and spacious, good and deep. And that's basically it. You've got your, your sun visor here, which has got a nice mirror if you're sharing the car with your husband or your wife. And all in all, it's a nice place to be. When we go to drive, we've got this key, but this has the upgrade stop and start. So don't really know why it has the flip up key, but to be honest, that's a great fiddling device. Anyway, to actually drive. So this particular one is the manual gearbox. Now, driving it, it is an enjoyable gearbox. It's kind of a relatively short shift. It's a super light clutch, but definitely get the automatic dual clutch version because it's definitely, without a doubt, the better gearbox. And in a big car like this, in an SUV, in 2019, it's automatic all the way. Now, to drive, again, it's lovely around the corners. It's nice and tight, and it goes back to that kind of feeling of it's a well-built, under the Volkswagen Banner Group car, and say it have done a very good job at that. So I have to commend them where, where it's due. The party piece, when it comes to driving in this, is actually all the driving aids that it offers. So we spoke previously about the fact that it will kind of automatically park. So if you pull up to a spot, you can press a button, it'll find it and it'll parallel park for you or go into a, into a spot in a car park. That's no problem. But where it gets really interesting is it has also cruise control, but it's adaptive cruise control. And I used it on the way here on the M50 and I have to say it's remarkable. So you can set your distance using this little, little lever here and it'll keep a certain distance. And effectively, when the traffic slows down, you don't really have to worry about it and it'll just slow for you. So it kind of will help help a lot of those fender benders, I think, as well as just making it more convenient day to day. Another safety system that this has that I think is worth mentioning is this little emergency button up here. So let's say, God forbid, you do have an accident and you end up where you can't even talk to the ambulance, you can't find your phone, whatever happens, the car will automatically ring the emergency department and they'll tell them where you are, send the coordinates and they'll come and help, which, in, in 2019, it's a cool thing to have that kind of safety and security if you do have a crash. In terms of engines, you've got various different petrol and diesel. You've got the 1.5 litre petrol, 2 litre petrol, and then you've got the 2 litre diesel. Now, a lot of people are actually recommending the 1.5 petrol, but I think the 2 litre diesel is the one to get in Ireland. Now, of course, they're available in various different manual, DSG gearboxes, four wheel drive, front wheel drive, whatever you want, the options there. The most popular is probably gonna be the front wheel drive, two liter diesel with the 150 brake horsepower. It is also available with 190, but the 150 is more than adequate for an SUV like this. In terms of economicalness, they're claiming roughly six liters per 100 kilometers, which at today's rate of about 135 a liter, it's gonna cost you about eight euros to drive 100 kilometers, which in an SUV of this size and this amount of substance is pretty reasonable. So it's time for our favorite and least favorite things about the Seat Taraco. Now let's start with the ladder, the least favorite. Now, as much as I love this strip along there and I mentioned that it's nice and sleek, unfortunately, unlike the Audi, it doesn't actually light up. Now I understand that they have to keep some of their aces in their pockets for things like the high-end Audis, but it's kind of just a bit of a disappointment. Number two, so we have two phones right here. This is the iPhone X, still available in shops. When you put it there, the wireless charging, if you wait two seconds, works perfectly. Now, this is an iPhone 8, which is also still available in shops, but the wireless charging unfortunately doesn't work. So although it's a great feature, if you buy this car, you might need to buy a new phone. 
And for number three, I'm not gonna mention the fact that these exhausts aren't real. Instead, I'm gonna point out something back here because as nice and as comfortable as the seats are, 2012 cold and they would like their, uh, their manual levers back because in an excellence model, this car really should have electric seats. Now, there's nothing wrong with these seats. That's a very first world problem to have, but I just genuinely believe all kind of elite SUVs should come with electric seats as standard. All right, so three of my favorite things. Now, the front of it, as you can see, is quite nice. The grill's, the grill's nice. The lights, absolutely beautiful. When I pulled up into this car park, there actually happened to be a Kodiak sitting right next to it. And I think when I put the two cars side by side, the front of the Turaco is far nicer and far more present. So definitely that is one of my favorite things. Number two is the rear space and the seats in general. So as you know, I was a big fan of all the maneuverability. I think that is brilliant. There's obviously isofix points, which I don't think I mentioned, but where I'm really a fan is I think it's gonna be very easy to clean. So this is a mixture of cloth, leather, and a bit of Alcantara, I'm gonna say, but they are available in full leather. But the thing is, it's very cleanable. And what I say by that is if you do have five kids, chances are the back of your car is gonna be quite messy at times. So to be able to clean it out nice and easily is definitely a plus. And number three on my favorite things is the overall safety. Now I spoke about the accidents avoidance. You can see you have the radar here. You've parking sensors, rear cameras. You've got the SOS emergency calling system if you do have an accident. The overall safety, it's just phenomenal and it's really stepping up the game. In terms of financing, now let's take it that you have a 30% deposit, whether it be a trade-in or a cash deposit. You can actually get the SE model 1.5 petrol for about 357 euros a month. Pay that for 36 months, then you're left with a few options. One being just giving the car back, another is to continue paying it off, or of course you could actually upgrade and get yourself into the new version. Now, that is with the SE model, but if you want to upgrade to something like the Excellence model, Seat are actually offering a 0% finance on 192 models of that Excellence. So definitely something to look out for, but all in all, I want to finish off this review by saying it is a fantastic car. Next to the Kodiak, it's a tough one. You guys, I would love to hear what you think is nicer, what, what you would go for if you're in the position to buy one of these SUVs, as they are both so similar and it's kind of subjective at the end of the day. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your recent comments, engagement. The channel is growing and we really appreciate it. And we will see you in the next video.